when y'all met, she just got out of a relationship. Yep. She's wanting to give up on life. Yeah. How did you feel about this new energy being in your life, this new person, this person that's kind and gentle and persistent? I was uh, hesitant. And I would put up walls because I didn't want to be hurting. Because so I was like, this has to be too good to be true. He is too nice. He is treating me too well. He is looking out for my best interests, which nobody else did. Mm. He's teaching me things. You know what I'm saying? It was just too good to be true. And so I had built up this wall. And that's kind of like in the beginning where we have our little moments because he's like, no, this is this is me. Like, I do love you. Like, I do for so real. How would you I want to be it? with you. How would you reveal your walls? Would you... Go intensely, not answering his phone, uh, not calling him, or uh, make up excuses to meet up with him that day. Or that's a good question. It was probably a lot of that, and and he he's also big. Like you know, we, let's be honest. Like let's yeah. lay things on the table. If I ask you a question, I want you to give me the deets yeah. give, and give it to me that's truthfully. I and I was withholding a lot of stuff. I never imagined my public healing would inspire others to heal across the world. I thank you for using him to reach the world with the message of hope in relationships. But your life does not. God, you are my publicist. We laugh. <laughs> we share the unadulterated truth. He said, not only have I not divorced you, I ain't exposed you. Oh. We didn't marry fans, we married forever. And we wanted forever to act like a fan. Reveal her, Jesus. I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. And Father, I declare for his future wifey. Thank you for preserving her. This season, I declare miracles and manifestations. See, you're selling scripts. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You being true to who you are, you're going to attract. Mm. It's a Hebrew word, chayil, and it was translated wealth. And it means people. It means men. It means resources. And it means means. I'm Lataris R. Whitfield, and this is the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lataris R. Whitfield. Listen, are you still shacking up with us? If you're still shacking up with us, come on, can we get a commitment? Hit that subscription button and subscribe. Make sure you turn on your notification bell so you'll be notified about upcoming episodes. Man, listen, thank y'all for us reaching 400,000 subscribers, man. Y'all have been rocking with me for three years and we've been growing exponentially. So uh, thank you so much. All the DMs I've been getting, all the comments, I read them all. And y'all have been pouring out your love for the Dear Future Wifey podcast. So thank you so much. Y'all know that people I choose on my podcast is, is very strategic. I like when I meet couples, it gives me a snapshot of what I desire in my future marriage. And I met this dynamic couple when I was doing an event, which we'll talk about uh, in a minute. So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. My new homies, Jonathan and Tatiana Mary. Hey. How y'all doing? What's up? Hey. What's up? We in this thing now? Yes, we yeah. are. We here. Man, listen, listen. All right, and before I get started, those that want to join us on the healing retreat in Los Cabos on November the 9th through the 12th, make sure you go into the description, uh, book your room. Uh, we partner with I Can't Wait to Travel, so make sure you do that, because I know y'all going to be hitting me up after we're booked up and get mad <laughs> asking we make uh, availability. So let me ask y'all this. How important was it for you to experience healing before y'all met each other? Ooh. Was I healed before we met? <laughs> I, I wasn't healed no. before we met. I, I don't even think I was close to being healed no. before we met. Which is interesting. Did that come out in the marriage? <sighs> Did she push triggers that you were unaware of and you like, oh gosh, you reminded me of so and so that I dated? Why are yes. you starting off? Oh, we just, why, 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 we, why are you starting off? Yeah, we just, we just woke yeah, up and chose yeah, violence, yeah, yeah, yeah. Jonathan. Yeah, That's I, I understand how we're doing it today. Are we right. ready? I work out every day, so I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> I am ready for this. You ready, Tatiana? Yes. All right, we're in this thing. So, was it triggers that was pushed in the journey? Uh, yes, yes. There were definitely things that happened between us. Uh, that reminded me of things in my past that I a light went off where I was kind of like, you know what, this might not be even when we were dating. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That reminded me, you know what, I remember telling her one day, I was like, I don't think this is gonna work, and yeah. it, I, it, and I told her, and the one crazy thing about it was, 
and we were by her house, and I live like forty minutes away. And this kind of, after we had that conversation, I basically said, "Look, I might go my own way." Yeah, he was done with me. He was done. Yeah, done. I had been I had been withholding information. Uh oh. Yep. Okay. Uh-huh. Gotta be careful. Gotta be careful, I was, man. I thought I was protecting his heart. But you know, that's what she called it. Yeah. <laughs> <she> called it. <laughs> uh, lies and, and trying to just be deceitful, it, it eventually comes yeah, out. Yeah, come you out. Know what I'm saying? My mom's so, always say, what happens in the dark comes to the light. Yeah, very yeah. true. Yeah. And so, yeah, he, it did come to light. He was like, I'm, I'm done with you. This is interesting yeah. to get to the place of being done when your journey started out where you knew that she was the one. And so, what we're going to do is, I'm going to ask y'all if there was a title, if it was a, a movie, and they named the movie after your love story, what would that title be? Mm. That's a good one. That That's is a good, a good one. That's a good one. Man. It could it could man even be like fire. Man on Fire. <laughs> <laughs> it could even be like a Romeo and Juliet though. Because for me, I felt like I had met my knight in shining armor. You did. Yes. But then I got to that death point. Like hit rock bottom and it the only reason i was able to crawl out of that was god but and that was during the dating phase that was no that's through the whole relationship okay i'm talking about yeah yeah because we had got year seven and it was everybody talk about that the seven year itch <laughs> yeah, yeah that seven year i itch. thought seven was supposed to be like a good thing yeah, yeah. no i was <laughs> itching not. all over man it, it was <laughs> it's not. it was tough it was really tough to even be in the same household Tough to be in close proximity, yeah. close to be in the same zip code. It was like that? Yeah. He did yeah. not like yeah. stand each other's presence? Yeah. No. It was like, because when I met him, I was like, oh, he's so kind. He was different. Okay? He was different. And then when the... What do you mean different? What do you mean different? What do you mean different? You were just like, he was a gentleman. When he approached me for the very first time, he came up to me, like, like grabbed my hand lightly and was like, excuse me, miss, what's your name? And yeah. that was Thank not you, that was not normal, <laughs> you know. Said, Grab my hand ju- uh, gently. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "Oh, this is new." And so to me, that was intriguing, and and also his persistence because when we first met, it was like game on. He was like, "I'm gonna hit you up every single day." Let's talk about that. Yeah. Okay. How did you meet her? So we met uh, at a Diddy party. Yeah. Uh, Diddy was in town in Detroit. Go Detroit. Um, and so he was having a party for Ciroc or whatever, and she was one of the promotional model girls. And so I walked in. I came in the door. I was very tired because I had just came in from L.A. Um, and so I was tired. I didn't even want to go that night. But mm-hmm. obviously I saw my fellas getting ready, and I'm like, you know what? Why I ain't gonna be the person. I ain't gonna be the person that's still at home when everybody else out having fun. So I got there, and as soon as we pulled up, I was like, "Oh my god, I should have just stayed home." I just felt a bad vibe. Just like this, this is just just go home right now. Literally was about to go home. Really, walk in the door, and about 125 feet away, there is this beautiful woman that like was so intriguing, almost like a light around her that I said within seconds. <laughs> I said, there goes my wife. And that night, you know, I saw her from afar. I, ch- I text my boys like, yo, I just met my hold wife. On, hold on. How would you say you just met your wife and you just see I mean, some I, I, mean, I, mean I, just, I mean, I just saw her. Huh? You said what? Yeah. Said like, how, how would you think that was your wife? It was like a straight download. Well, what if she was already married? It didn't matter. <laughs> he was gonna steal me. Yeah. Okay. Gonna steal. <laughs> For real though, it was like a straight. Did, so, it was a straight down low. I don't. So men, what, so men, what, men talk about like love at first sight. Yeah. Is yeah. it real? Yes. That day, I swear, I saw her from 125 feet. She was up in the VIP area. I saw this woman, and I've seen beautiful women. I've traveled across all the yeah. world. I've seen beautiful women. They come. They yeah. come and go. But this one from afar was just like God was like, "That's your wife." And you saw. So is, is this a packed club? Is this is this an event where it's a lot yeah. of people at? A lot of and people at. Yeah. A lot of people at. And mind you, it's dark. Like how you how yeah. did you see me? Man, how did you see me? Man, you had on this blue dress. It was <laughs> he a little. Remembers it, all it, the details. It, it, I know all the details. All the details. I know all the details. Your hair was slow. It was dark. She used to wear dark hair. Yeah, I had and black hair. she had dark hair. She looked as pretty as she did now. Mm. And uh, I saw her, and I was just like. That's my wife. 
You just looked at her and said that's... Looked at her. I told my boys. I text my boys. I just saw my wife. So would you casually throw this stuff around in the past? See a woman and say, that's my wife? No. So you was never that dude? No. They knew... For, they thought I was joking. And the only reason they thought I was joking was because... Not that I would say something like yeah. that. I've never said anything like that before. But the fact is that I said I just saw my wife mm. and hadn't even said anything to her. Right. They were a little like, okay, 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 whatever, <laughs> whatever. And so, you know, within 10 months, we were married. All right. So how did you get from I see her to I talk to her? What happened? Man, so I was strategizing that night <laughs> because she was 125 feet away <laughs> and she was in the VIP section with Diddy and I was supposed to be in that section. But I knew if I went into that section, then it's kind of like I'm I'm amongst everybody else. I wanted a moment that I knew that it was just going to be me and her. So I waited and like kind of looked, kind of looked, got closer and closer, kind of looked, but didn't want to see, you know, yeah. two stalkers. She was coming <laughs> down the steps. And then that's when I took my opportunity uh, to talk to her. And did that whole hand thing. Excuse yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's when he gently yes. put his hand on you. Yeah. And what did you think when you first met him? Nothing. So nothing. Oh, man. No, I didn't. America, the world. Did you I hear know, that? I know, I'm so sorry. Here I am saying, I'm just, I'm at, okay. I'm, I, I see I'm my wife we 125 feet places. away. <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, okay. I'm serious. I mean, that's, that's just where I was. Were you used to guys hitting on you all the time? Yes. And so how did you view that? Was it like, were you the type that says, I'm going to go out, I'm going to go to work, I don't want no guy trying to talk to me? Well, I yes, don't... at that moment I was at that because I had just gotten out of a really bad relationship. Okay. So I was done with guys, period. I was done with life, and I was... Were you done with guys? Make... Were you gonna go to girls at that point? No, I was just done, <laughs> just in general you dating. Ask me right? Yeah, you do. I know, right? <laughs> and women be like, "I'm done with guys." So no, you going to I was girls? just done with life, and life. I was. I wanted to escape, so I was like, "I'm gonna move to Miami. My brother's out there. I can do fashion out there. I can do modeling out there." Um, I just wanted to escape what I was in at the present moment. But you also said that you you've told me before that. You didn't even care if you died. Correct. In a sense, like why? You didn't care well, what yeah. happened. So what, what was making you give up on life? I was in a really life? toxic relationship, and I had been in relationships where I was cheated on, lied to, and I was just done because when I get in a relationship, I'm loyal, I'm committed, and I give. Well, I thought I gave my all, but you know, <laughs> so I you gave thought. my all, <laughs> and I was just. I was hurt for the last time. And yeah. I was like, you know what? I just need to be single. And I just need to enjoy my singleness. Yeah. Because I, it's almost like I got into a serious relationship, like one after another. And so, yeah, I was just going to escape. And I was on a path of making a lot of really reckless just decisions. And so when he came up to me, it was kind of like a, a breath of fresh air because it was different yeah. how he approached me. Um, and so something felt different there. But... You still didn't. You didn't want to make the. I investment. didn't want anything serious. I yeah. was, if he asked me for my number, sure. Here you go. I'm gonna give my number to whoever asked me tonight. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I don't care. Who that. wants a number? Oh, you go. Man. You get a number. Man, you you get a number. Look, look, Everybody look, get the you number. You make me look not memorable right now. Like, I, like, like you make me look real bad. Babe, but you it's are all good. still here. Yeah. I am still here. You are. You are right. You I am still here. You don't want one. And so the next day, she after we meet, she texts me and she's like. Can you send me a picture of you? And I'm like, it was dark. I was working. Was like, I was busy. I, she, I didn't know which you one know you what? were. I, this just <laughs> came to my which mind. One you were. She didn't remember who it was. Oh yeah, because dimples. Yes, because yeah. I had called her dimples. Yes. And she said somebody else that night had called her dimples. So she's trying to figure out which dude is it. And I'm like, how many dudes did you give your number to last night? I'm thinking this was the most memorable experience in my <laughs> life. I met my wife. She knows I'm her yeah, husband. I'm yeah. sorry, babe. We were in two different places. Yeah, we were. Two totally different we places. Were. And so, so she asked for a picture. Did you send her a picture? I sent her a picture. I was at the Mercedes-Benz dealership. I had a Benz at the time. And so <laughs> it was in service. It was in service. So I took a picture like this, <laughs> smiling. But I didn't know that the Benz... Yes, you did. Just, Don't even lie. You went like I, I, this. I, 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 you can see, right? What angle is this? <laughs> no, so, so I put, so I, I took the picture, and so uh, yeah, so she must have liked the look. I did. So this is what I said. I was like, okay, he's cute. I could talk to him. 
But I didn't like, I felt like he was trying to so the, so show Carl. what he has. And I'm just not that girl. Like, I don't care what kind of money you got. All that. I, I want your heart. Well, as it is, because women say that and you see a woman as attractive as you. Uh-huh. Women say that stuff. Don't it sound good? Yeah, it sound good. Yeah. Yeah. But is that really, is that a ask really truthful him, statement? Ask him about my past, who I've dated before. Okay. He knows. Has, he dated, has he dated guys <laughs> he, that were I don't know them personally. But right. I just know that, I've seen them. But I'm talking about like, financially, financially, where were they? Yeah, at? I don't know. Financially. But I mean, I was young. Like, I was in my early 20s. Like, who is really financially stable? <laughs> well, at I'm that talking age? about you had some little dope boys. Like, you you, true. you grew up in Detroit. Yeah. So true. you may have some little dope boys, and they really trying to shoot their shot at girls like you. So at the end of the day, were you, you're telling me in the state that you were at, and you're at a party hosted by Diddy. Right. So you're meeting these industry people, people with money. You tell me in your mind, you look at those guys and be like, yes. Oh. I would get approached by, I mean, by celebrities, That's basketball what I'm players. It just wouldn't phase me. Is that was not impressed if you had to stand out in some way. Like your money was not going to talk to me. It just doesn't. She says that. <laughs> I'm being I, I, honest. I, I can't. I can't. I can't vouch for because yeah. I wasn't there during right. that time period. But she mm-hmm. has told me that, you know, countless people. Because I basically did when I met her. I did, you know how you you get a job and then they do this search to make sure that you ain't committed no felonies. I did a search through every athlete, every friend, every person I knew to see if there was some history that anybody know who Tatiana Thompson was. And there was no, there was no history. There was no history. So I'm like, I'm in the clear. So it must have been because she can't, as beautiful as she was, and just not just on the outside, but also on the inside. I knew for a fact that somebody must have, that I know, must have known or talked to her, but it really came down to like zero people knew. Yeah. Yeah. Nobody didn't know her. No. It was almost like everybody. Did you grow up in Detroit? I lived in the city with my parents till I was about 10, and then we moved to the suburbs. But you grew up in 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 the Detroit area, like yeah. out in that area. Yeah, and y'all both life. grew up there. Yeah. yeah, never seen each other. Yeah, we're only, and we're only eight months apart, so that's around the same time. Right. Yeah, it's just yeah. crazy. I mean, people was hitting me up like, "Yo, she got a sister. <laughs> she got she got I a got cousin. Four brothers, no sisters. <laughs> she got a cousin. Like, she got somebody that looked like her because they would meet her and be like, dude, she's Aww. she's nice. Like, just on the inside, like, yeah, she's beautiful, but." Uh, who she was on the inside, that's also what was attractive to me. So how long did it take you to tell her what you felt like you heard in the first encounter that that was your... I didn't say the encounter. Yeah. The first time you said eyes on her. Yeah. When did you? How long did you wait to tell her, so, I believe you, my so wife? So we saw each other every day that week. Yeah. So I we I met her on a Thursday night. We went out Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, Monday night, Tuesday. <laughs> I said he was persistent. Yeah, Did yeah. I? Very persistent. Now she says I'm persistent, <gasps> but every day I would wait for her to text me to text her. He had some little game going. I wasn't about to be like I'm pressed about you, but I also wanted to see <laughs> was she impressed with me facts yeah so i needed that assurance yeah. to, to keep be, making to, you to make me say okay let yeah. me continue on and what i'm thinking so it took a week we went out to lunch i was about to go out of town and uh i remember it was a friday we went to lunch because <laughs> she thought i was doing too much like we had kids or something she's like oh you you you're trying to do too much so like therefore i need to see you during the day just get, to really get <laughs> oh yeah to really to, 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 like... to, to really get to know i'm like <laughs> I, I mean, I got stuff to do during the day, but okay. <laughs> so we had this lunch. I was about to go out of town and we're having this nice lunch. And I gave her this poem that I told her I had wrote. Um, right. And uh, I in the poem, it said, I wanted to be, you know, I want you to be my wife. I want you to have my first, I want you to have my son. Um, it was a really deep poem. You're talking about in the first week. In the first in week. The first Did you think week. he was crazy? Yes, I thought that man was crazy. So he goes off to L.A., and he gives me this poem. I'm like, okay, it's very well written, but it says some crazy stuff. Like, I don't know you. And so I take it to my dad and I'm like, dad, look what this crazy man just gave me. He's saying <laughs> I'm going to be his wife and I'm going to have his son. And I don't know who he is. But he was like, Tatiana, don't worry. He's going to be here today, gone tomorrow. 
That's what your dad so, said. That's what my dad said, but you know, of course, John still brings it up all the time. Like, Dad, I'm still I'm here. I'm still here. I'm still here. So why did you difference. say that? Why did you put that out there like this? What the poem? Yeah, why would you say that? You are gonna be my wife? Because I thought it was the time for me to tell her. You know, we we were so confident. I was trying to move quick. I was 27 <laughs> years old. I was tired of being in. I know some people get tired of being in relationships. Yeah, but for me, I felt like. Even though I probably wasn't ready, I mm. believe some kind of crazy way that God felt I was. Mm. And mm. it's sometimes like we what we feel or what we yeah. think don't always match up to what he wants to do. Yeah. yeah. And so that was a, a, a something in me that I had to deal with that week. Like I have to tell her some way. I have this, I've been burning with it all week. I can't just tell my boys, I need to let this person know before I go out of town one more time that you're supposed to be with me. A week in. A week. What was, you, what? It was, it was crazy is that my dad met my mom and they were married within like six months. Okay, her so dad, we have the same, her our dad, parents have the same, like, oh, yeah. same scenario too. My dad, he was at a nightclub. My mom is from Mexico. So she comes to the U.S. as a young 20-some-year-old to visit her family. She goes out to this nightclub or whatever. My dad sees her and tells his friend, that's my wife. Never even speaks to her, and the lady barely even speaks English. <laughs> <laughs> then, then, she speaks English now. She speaks English now. Yeah, She's yeah. a whole citizen, said- but but at that time, she didn't. She was not a U.S. citizen. She That was the first time in the U.S. She... Has never dated a black man before, you know, just like all kinds neither, of stuff. Neither had you though. Very true. Very wow, true. Yeah. so it's generational. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm getting bracing myself because we got four kids, three of them girls. You're right. I, I, I'm kind of bracing myself for some dude coming up to me saying, "Hey, that's my wife." And you, you and are I, not going to deal with it. No, I'm not going to deal with it. Will. I'm not going to deal with it. Will. Like, that's oh, that's the devil. That's, that's a lot. Tough. That, that, he goes, "I rebuke you." you. I rebuke you. Say. <laughs> That'd yeah. be crazy, though. That yeah. would be crazy. Let's yeah. let's move on. Okay. <laughs> He's yeah. about to get triggered. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> We're not he healed from yet. that yet. Yeah, 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 he ain't there yet. He ain't there yet. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, let's move on. Yeah. So when you looked at that, so you're, and how did your parents meet? Something uh, similar? So my dad is a pastor or a bishop, and he was actually uh, at a wedding, and the pastor asked him to preach the next the next day. So it was Saturday wedding. And so while he was at the wedding, he saw this girl that was in the crowd. And so the next the day. Crowd. Yeah. And so the next day when he was <laughs> preaching, he saw her again. And I'm like, well, I'll say that after. But so after service, he introduced himself to her, asked her for a phone number. Um, and so they end up talking or whatnot. Um, but it, I tell him all the time. So you was preaching. And your eyes was in the crowd. Right, looking at women. Looking at a woman. But I mean, I'm I'm thankful because I wouldn't be here without it. But um but yeah, man, it was just uh they they've been married now for forty five years and And they met and how long before they met did um did they get married? I think six months. Yours yours was four I think your her parents was four, my parents were six. And y'all was ten. And we were ten months. So y'all was six plus four. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds good. Sounds good. Sounds good. (laughs) Sounds good. I'll yeah. take it. Wow. That is crazy. Yeah, it and, is. And so you were, when y'all met, she just got out of a relationship. Yep. She's wanting to give up on life. Yeah. How did you feel about this new energy being in your life, this new person, this person that's kind and gentle and persistent? I was uh, hesitant, and I would put up walls because I didn't want to be hurt again. So I was like, this has to be too good to be true. He is too nice. He is treating me too well. He is looking out for my best interest, which nobody else did. Mm. He's teaching me things. You know what I'm saying? It was just too good to be true. And so I had built up this wall. And that's kind of like in the beginning where we have our little moments because he's like, no, this is this is me. Like, I do love you. Like, I do for so real. How would you I want to be it? with you. How would you reveal your walls? Would you... Go intensely, not answering his phone, uh, not calling him, or uh, make up excuses to meet up with him that day. Or- That's a good question. It was probably a lot of that, and and he he's also big. Like you know, we, let's be honest. Like let's yeah. lay things on the table. If I ask you a question, I want you to give me the deets, yeah, give, and give it to me That's truthfully. 
And I was withholding a lot of stuff because I thought, like yeah. I said, I was going to protect his heart. You're like, you don't need to know that's how all we got to that. that. That's how we got to that point yeah. in month three that like something happened and just like, are you going to tell me the truth right. about this? Because if not, then I'm going to just go home and you can stay at your parents' house and we can go our separate ways. But the fact that she drove to my house behind me 40 minutes to I say. Felt, okay, so I did. I felt like so convicted. It was almost like if I do not release this mm. and just let it all out, I can never be with him. Mm. Like I can't, this relationship cannot go on, Tatiana. Like I was talking to myself in my car and I was like, I just got to do it. And that was that was almost like I, I was breaking barriers with that because I was being truthful when I, I was scared to. Yeah. You know, I was letting him know my ins and my outs and I didn't know how he was going to receive that. But I did and I took that ballsy move and I drove I followed him I was like the stalker girl and showed up at his house and I just laid it all out and I was like I do want to be with you and I remember crying and just bawling and and I was that was me like just giving him all of me like this is me I got flaws and I hope you accept it <laughs> what, 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 what did you think about that moment um my whole ride home and I knew that she was behind me oh you knew she was behind <laughs> yeah yeah and I was saying to her, so, would she please hit an exit and go back like, is she really thinking that she's going to be able to say something to me? Oh, so you were gonna, done, done. Oh, no, for real. I was, I, was, yeah. I was literally like, one thing for me is just like, in those first three months, I'm showing you, laying you out all of my cards. Yeah. yeah. And I'm letting you know, I let you know in the week, in the weekend, yeah. like, this is what I want. Yeah. This is how I see it. This is where we can be. This is how we can grow. And I think so many times people get in a situation where they're in that, where they they are being open, but there is somebody else on the other side withholding stuff, mm -hmm. which makes it harder for there to be growth. Because if both people aren't after the same uh, thing, then it, it, there's nothing really going to be about, come, become of it. So when she was behind me driving, I really was saying to myself, whatever she got to say, don't, don't matter. Don't, matter. Yeah. don't take it in. Just let her say what she got to say if she do show up and just say we're going to move on. But when we got when I when we got to our house and I, my, our house <laughs> it ended up being our house. Yeah. But when I when I got out the car and she was there and you could see the tears in her eyes, you could see that vulnerability there. And our vulnerability wasn't like her being strategic. Or, hey, this is what I got to do to yeah. get her back. You could tell that it was genuine, that it was authentic, that it was yeah. real. And so then I said, and I, I think we held each other, and we were able to move on from it. Mm -hmm. So right then, you let you you buried the hatchet. You was like, yeah. Sometimes I'm good at doing that, and sometimes I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes you hold on to it. Oh man, oh, I'm, a, yeah. I'm a holder. I'm a hold to the. I'm a hold on. And I know it's probably not positive. It's not good. <laughs> it's not. But it's just me. <laughs> now just me. that wasn't always the case. True. That wasn't always the case. As time progressed, I was the one that I always be the person that I would say, I'm sorry. Yeah. Because I don't want there to be time wasted. Yeah, that's how But I then it got to the point where things got so toxic, so bad between us that I didn't care anymore. It was like, I'm going to hold on. I'm going to be like you. I'm, oh, I'm, it was I'm, pride. It, it was pride. Like, so yeah. I let my pride get in the way of a lot of different things. And um, it got really, really bad to a point where... I, I I was gonna walk away, yeah. but y'all are married. That that's year seven. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna get we're gonna get to year seven. Yeah, we're gonna go to this beautiful happy moment where y'all had this moment of <laughs> reconciliation, yeah. and God was able to keep y'all holding on. Yeah, um, through this moment of vulnerability, she follows you 40 minutes to your home. Yeah. She shares her uh, heart about whatever she was withholding, which right. I know people are like, I want to know what she was withholding. I know they're saying that in the, in the, in the comments right now. <laughs> what was she withholding? She, so, can say, she can say it. What was I, it? I, I, what was it? it, she it was, was, so I believe it was, she was still, so in that three months, Oh. she did not let me know that there were other people. Yes. Oh, she was still dating. That okay. she was still talking to. Oh, okay. Whereas, if I'm seeing you every day, you like when okay. you have time talking. When do you have time? Well, listen, like did I you, said, do you work? Do you are you productive? That <laughs> yes. you got, you got time to see. Now, we now were notice, at two different places. Now notice, after, if I would see her after work, 
I would drive, remember, she's 40, 40 minutes. 50 minutes. Yeah. Her work was 50 minutes away from me. So I would drive to spend an hour and a half and drive with her home at night. Another 50 minutes. And then drive home another yeah. 50 minutes at night. Just And then we were doing that on a nightly basis. And it wasn't just me. She was doing the same thing. Yeah. So I'm thinking, if you're doing this. When do you have time? When do you, and it wasn't just one dude. <laughs> it was two. I told you I was in a bad place. She was in a place where she said, listen, I ain't got nothing to give care. nobody. However, I will <clears throat> say this, that the more he stuck around because he was so persistent, I did start to be like, okay, I'm done with you. Yeah. Done with you. Yeah. Done with you. That's three. I remember. I remember all right, exactly all right, how many there all right. were now. I'm about to leave. It's a new person. It's a new person. I don't remember how many there That's were. It's another person we don't, don't know about. It's a mystery person. Days. Mystery person. If you watch this YouTube, DM me. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. But then, so what was it about him? Because I know when you're, and, and, and you know, I always say, Date multiple people until you find the one. And so you're dating multiple people. Mm-hmm. He keeps what kept making you, because I always say someone gets priority. Yeah. You have these other guys, you may talk to him. You'd yeah. be on the phone with one of the guys. He called you, I, I'm, I'm going to talk to you later. And yeah. you get off the phone and talk to him. Yeah. So what was making him priority? So I didn't know what it was, but I figured out what it was. And it was the God in him that stood out. And you wasn't saved at the time, were you? I was not saved. But you felt something in him that was. yes. Yeah, definitely. It was strong. Yeah, I felt that. I didn't know what it was. And you can tell him what happened. What happened with what? With 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 the whole salvation and everything because in the oh, beginning oh, he didn't point. tell me yeah. the guy was even living on the inside of him. I didn't know <laughs> I knew about Jesus, okay, but I didn't have a relationship with Jesus. I didn't know what salvation was. I didn't know what the Holy Spirit was. I didn't know about lifting hands and all this. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I I was oblivious. She was saying Mary's <laughs> I was. I was praying to saints. I, yeah. mean, I just I just grew up Catholic. Right. I didn't know any yeah, other so way. So it's just different. Yeah. yeah. So for for me, I also, when I met her, because she wasn't churched in a sense, I just wasn't trying to reveal or show everything what straight gate was and what that meant. Yeah. Because that pressure could have been like, I don't want anything to do with that. And it wasn't really. So one time she was at my condo and she was in my closet for some reason. I'm still not sure to this day why she was in my closet. Cleaning up after you, probably. Uh, I'm a clean person. You better, I don't know, you better, babe. You, you better, still you, like to leave just like pants. Yeah, okay, all right. Okay, all right. Looking for women clothing. All right. You are clean, all right. Uh, y'all, you, clean. You, remember, people watching now. You watch. He is clean, okay? He's so, clean. She was in my closet. And she picks up this CD. And she's like, who is Bishop Andrew Mary? Oh, yeah. She was like, is this your daddy? And I'm like, girl, put that CD down and come back in here. Close that door. Because I was trying not to. You're trying like, to hide that. Yes. Yeah. I remember one time she was like, on a Saturday, she was like, I was like, all right, all right uh, you got to go because I got I got, oh. I got, I got, to church in the morning. She was like. I thought he was lying. I was like, this is your lie to go to church. You have to go to church? Sure. I'm, sure. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. I'm like, no, for real. I got to go to church. She's like. Mm-hmm. So this is your lie? Yeah. She thought I was lying to I her. Did. Like, literally, like, who goes to church? <laughs> Like that, and why are you going to church? Yes, and yeah. I was for real. Like you got, I, I got to get church in the morning. So um, <laughs> she she picks up the CD and said, "Who is this?" And so it just so happened I didn't want to expose her to that. Why? Because there's a difference, I believe, in saying, "Hey, you want to come to church with me?" Then, "Hey, come on and sit on the front row and look at thousands of people look at you as you walk down, and all these eyes are on who is this woman." Yeah. I didn't want that for her. So, so it would have been different if you wasn't in a position that you were yes, in. Yes, correct. If you were just, correct. if you were just uh, a Christian and then you went there, no. that'd be different from mm-hmm. your father being a yes, pastor. Yes, because I wasn't, a pa- I wasn't a pastor at the time. So, uh, so what happens is, is we get to a point where I believe it was month two. Yes. Month two. Yes. We'll say two out of ten. Month two out of ten, <laughs> pre-marriage. <laughs> And God is like really on me. You say, and I've told you and I've exposed this, that that's your wife. But you still haven't told her about me. Mm. And it was a 
deep conversation that I started to have in that month too, like almost on a daily basis. With her? No. Or with God? With, with God. God. Yeah. And it's like, how can you expect there to be a future if I ain't in it? Yes. And I think a lot of people get to a point where they're dating and they're with people that don't know God. And God is like, this is an opportunity. Hold on, hold on, Jonathan. I got to touch on something. This is interesting. You got mad at her because she was withholding mm. these other people she was entertaining yep. when you had yep. a whole relationship yep. that you didn't reveal that you had. Boy, ain't that you, know, you know what? Now that you bring it up. <laughs> you had a whole relationship over here. We don't have something here. else to talk about tonight. <laughs> you had a whole relationship over here that you didn't sure want to tell. Yeah, wow, that's that crazy. Sure yeah. Sure Isn't that did. crazy? It was crazy. And then God began to start tugging at you saying, hey, you need to reveal this. You need to reveal our relationship. You know, we got this whole thing we got going on. You're like, ah, you know, yeah. I just. Right. And then so what So what? What made you say, hey, listen, I got to. Did you feel like she was not going to accept that? Or uh, what? Maybe some of it was that. Um, but it wasn't so much that would she accept Christ. It's would she accept. The life. The life of what. Yeah. The PK or being yeah. a part of the ministry that we had. At that had. point, did you know that you was called to the ministry? Um, I've always knew. But as most people who know, they don't want to do. Right. Mm-hmm. And you run away from, you try to ignore um, the promptings. But there came to a point when I believe one day she came over. I think I asked you over. And I'm like, you got to come over. And I told her, I said, look, if you really want to be with me, there's something I need to share with you. Mm, yes, I remember that. And we we were you were on the steps. We were talking to each other on the steps, and I just told her who Jesus was to me and who I believe he could be for her mm. and what that would represent for us. Ooh. He That's led good. me in salvation so smooth. I didn't even know what had happened. Ooh. I mean, it was a great experience. Tell, tell me that experience. He was just like, do you believe in Jesus? Yes, I do. Do you believe that he died on the cross and rose up? You know, yes. Do you want him to forgive you for your sins or your pet? Yes. And it was like, it was just, it was like casual conversation. So in his eyes, he was like, oh my gosh, this girl that I want to marry is now saved. Like she believes it all <laughs> and she don't even know <laughs> what has happened. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what he does. He leaves me. He's like, babe, I got to go. I got to go to church. He goes to the church oh, to, he left? to tell his daddy. Yeah, I, I got to go. And I'm like, okay, bye. Because like, my dad was like, you know, I also had a conversation with my dad. My dad was like, so who... What's really happening with this girl? Because he hadn't, he had met her once, but that was at, so the very first time I brought her around my parents was when my sister was having my nephew at the hospital, like three Whole hours. baby was born. For, like he was barely out the womb. Why did you want her to come? Because I had just got back in town. I'm always coming in and out yeah, of town. So I had just out. got back in town, but I wanted to see her. And I also wanted to see my nephew. So I'm like, hey, y'all just gonna, we're gonna we gotta have to do two, two and one. one. <laughs> Finally, they'll get a chance to meet her. And so that's the only time he got a and couple of minutes. At that point, how long were y'all talking to each other? A month. <laughs> but it, 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 it <laughs> one, out of, like a, one out of ten. It seems like a lot. <laughs> You said the first month you brought around time. your whole family at a, at a childbirth. Yeah, it was. Right. It wasn't. The stuff wasn't really making sense. This is not good. It's really not good stuff for That's y'all out there. That's how you know it's God. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It just gotta make, make sense. gotta make it make sense later on. But yeah, it wasn't the smartest thing to do. It really was. So what your dad said? He said that's, last, he, that's what did he get a chance to really talk to her. Or he just kinda, get, he just. Casual conversation. Hi, how are you? Yeah. What's took your name? She took some pictures with the baby. She took some pictures with the baby. <laughs> she took some pictures with the baby. With my mom. Yes. As if she was part his, of the family. Yes. It, yes. What? <laughs> He's the, only yeah. a couple of hours old. I made myself very comfortable. <laughs> like, so literally, we had the picture today. She's like... <laughs> <laughs> so, as, if, as if she, as if she was already I, I in there. Here. So, what made you do that? What made you feel that comfortable? You, you tell me, you walking around that environment, you didn't feel like this is the first month that I'm sitting around his family and his dad is this guy I saw on some CDs. I don't think she saw that yet. 
Oh, so you oh no, we, I didn't know that side yet. No, she didn't know that side yet. <laughs> this is pre. This so is pre. I, but I'm already invested in him. Like, I already love him. The first I'm month. like, I'm just going to be me. Like, they have to like me. Now, remember when she said she was putting up those walls and stuff? How long were those walls up? 30 seconds? Yeah. 60, uh, six, 60 you minutes. Talking 60 about the first minutes. First month she was talking about first minute. She was talking about she in love. <laughs> right. <laughs> I was putting up walls. Oh I was putting up walls. Oh, okay, there was some short, <laughs> short walls. Oh my god! You could hurt a little bit walls. Yeah. So, so you said so when you was in that environment, what did that feel like? Did it feel like this it is home? It felt comfortable. It did. It felt so safe. And his, I mean, his family was just so welcoming. They didn't treat me like, oh, who's this? And maybe, thankfully, Laura was on, you know how they put you on drugs and stuff. Yeah. She was a little loopy. So that might have been a good thing. I don't know. But <laughs> it felt good. It didn't feel awkward at all. So what was your family saying? So my mom was a little annoyed because I had been in and out of these long relationships yeah. she kind of was on the same page like Tatian, you just need a break can you just be on your own and just enjoy yourself and figure out what you love and travel blah blah you know blah 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 yeah so she was a little hesitant like you back in another relationship you just got out of one that was crazy so how long ago what, what was it was the duration between weeks Be- between me, us yeah between, between her and ending it was like and, yeah. days weeks it was very yeah it was, i was it like was, yeah. yeah it was yeah you said you didn't care this is my wife nah. yeah he didn't care what i thought yeah i was about to go to miami and be in the nice warmth but no yeah that is crazy yeah so a few weeks later you met you y- y'all met each other you sitting around the family yeah your family is welcoming yeah. her mm-hmm. um and then what and then 10 days later, that's when, uh, from 10 days after she met my uh, nephew, my family, that's when I introduced her to Christ. Yeah. About 10 days later. And then from then on. It was game it on. Was, it was just game on. I believe her dad her dad came to church with you. Both of my parents. Both of her parents came to church. It was on a Valentine's Day, yep. wasn't it? Uh, and this was that was two weeks after you got saved. And her dad and my dad talked after service and they both said, I'm good. And he said, I'm good too. Really? Yes. So they both had signed off. Really? Yeah. But how yeah. about this? So at the end of service, his dad does an altar call. I'd never seen altar calls. Uh, yeah. But in my heart, that was like, I, that's me. Because I didn't realize. I you already had, did it. Right. I had already did it. So I remember my arm just being like, that's me. I want that. And so he calls me up. And I'm up there, this, this girl, never been to the church before. And I'm up there with the bishop, and and then they have me going to the back. And instantly, I was filled with the Holy Spirit. I was like, what is happening? But she also had no idea, you know, of people that probably weren't happy to see that moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because other people thought that they was in line to be your wife. Yeah. You know, when yeah. you when you, when you a PK, they like... That's my husband. They yeah. mama's over here plotting. Right. Yeah. They positioning you after service to come and meet right. their daughter and all this type of stuff that's moving around. I messed uh, it all up. You messed it up. You just threw a monkey wrench in a lot of people's so uh, what they heard God say. God, yeah. they, God told them that my boy Jonathan was <laughs> their husband, right. and you came as the devil and came and took them from <laughs> unsaved heathen girl. <laughs> yeah. How did you feel about that, knowing that? And your dad just didn't care. He, he was just yeah. Like, he he he. My dad is uh, old school. He, he never minded. He always told me, and we always always had this understanding that the person that I bring to you is gonna be somebody that I vetted, and he believed in my vet. He did. Yeah. Even though she wasn't saved. Even though, mm-mm. and he knew that when she had just got saved, so he knew it was fresh. <laughs> She was a fresh, fresh catch. Fresh, fresh. She fresh just, out the water. Fresh out the water. <laughs> I didn't know. But see, that's, but you know, if we could look at that real quickly, I mean, if, even if you look at Paul, right? Yeah. Saul of Tarsus, like, okay, now now your eyes have been opened. Yep. Let's do this thing. So I think. Champion in the gospel. We, we, yeah. we think sometimes that it doesn't take God long to do things. Now, obviously, you have to become a disciple. You got to learn, yeah. grow, and mature, and things like that. But it doesn't, when God does something, God's That's why I, yeah. we God's both being. were in a situation of I'm wanting a relationship. She's not wanting a relationship. God puts those things together, and then 10 months later, 
you know, you have a bonded family. Yeah. So. You wanted a relationship. She didn't want a relationship. And then God brings the relationship that he has with you to introduce her into a relationship with him. And now oh, y'all have a relationship together. Man, Damn. let me tell you something. That thing will preach, Jonathan. That will. thing will preach. Will. And that's what's so beautiful because what happened in this whole process was two submitted hearts. Yep. Yes. Even though she didn't want a relationship, she was still submitted to the process. Yeah. Because she could have abandoned it any time. She could have just said, yep. hey, listen, brother, you're nice. Give me six months. Give me a year. Give me yep. whatever. I just don't have time for it. Yep. Right. You know, and her mom would have been like, yeah, I took good. Good job. Because mm -hmm. I've been telling you, take your time, exactly. get away from it. And it have been, and that would have been okay too. Mm -hmm. But it was the fact that she said, for whatever reason, I'm being drawn to the God in you. Mm -hmm. I don't even know it's God, but it's something, this yes. kindness, this these, these fruits of the spirit that you're exemplifying. Yes. She don't know it's fruits of the spirit. Right. She's just feeling something that's different from these other trifling dudes I done dealt mm -hmm. with. But I feel a drawing towards you. Mm -hmm. And then she ended up falling into relationship with God. Yeah. That is absolutely beautiful. Look at God. Look at God. Look what he did. Yeah. <laughs> he do it. Yeah. And he will. That's the thing. He will do and it. And so you said, and so now y'all are dating each other. Uh, y'all had that that bump in the road. Y'all come together through this level of vulnerability. And then what did it look like? Why? What made you say, let's get married pretty much within the first year that we met? So we were actually looking to get married the following year. Okay. But my father said, um, <laughs> when I see y'all, y'all might y'all might want to get married now. A little quicker. Y'all might want to get married <laughs> just temptation. a little <laughs> quicker. I don't really think it's wise. See, that's why you got to have spiritual me... wisdom in your life, right? He's like, I don't really think it's wise for you to be like, <laughs> just, smart. Wait, just He's smart. You know, we had, we had to do some things, too. Like, we... We purposefully, we were very intentional on not kissing. Y'all wasn't kissing? We had stopped kissing. We yeah. had stopped, like, having even, like, close proximity. Be yeah. You know what I'm saying? Cause yeah. I mean, it was, like, fire there. Yeah. Like, if I touch her, it's just, like, fire. Just burn. <laughs> like, it's just. He said, when he touched you. Yeah. And vice versa. Yeah. When she touched you. Yeah. yeah. So no, I'm serious. It was, like, literal butterflies when I would kiss him. I f like, it was, it was, like, heaven. Do you know what I'm saying? It felt so good. So I was like, okay, we no, we gotta but, do this right. But in your mind, what would what would you adopt? Was there such thing as a right in your mind, just coming out of uh, out of the world, so to speak? No. So this is the thing. He started to now. I had Bible study now every day with this man. Really? Yes, because I was on fire now. I had I had tasted something I had never had before. Yeah. And I was so intrigued, and so he would give me these quizzes. And I, because you asked I, for them. I, I wanted to learn. She wanted to learn. I really did. I had never, I hadn't had a Bible, so I didn't even know like the books of the Bible yeah. and all that. But when I start reading and like under getting understanding, now I'm on fire. Now I just want to know some more because it's all so good. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so you said you want to get married the following year. Your dad said, speed this up. Y'all yes. mm -hmm. got married in 10 months. He what? doesn't believe in long engagements for that reason. Yeah. And then he's like, if you intended to marry, why wait? Get you have the means to get married. What would you, you wait what, for? What would you waiting yeah. for? Yeah. So it was wisdom. So, and then when y'all got married, what were naysayers saying then? I don't think anybody was saying anything. Uh, not, not on my naysayers. side. Naysayers. Like, was people, because now you done got married. Yeah. At first, they see you walking around in church with this woman. Yeah. And now you actually getting married. And I yeah. know they announced it at the church. They oh. said this stuff. No. And, and huge it was, wedding. It was a huge yeah, wedding. Huge, huge wedding. wedding. Yeah. And that's another thing I remember, even from the first moment I stepped into the church, is the welcoming and the love that I received. So you, re you received love. I received love. Yeah. There may have been some people... You know, with a face, I just never received that though. That's good. So from my point of view, I've never received anything but but love. I've never had issues at all. What did you read? What, what did you hear? Was everybody all like, "Oh, that's uh, great"? I mean, everybody for the most part felt what I felt that she was different. You know, uh, merits are. Uh, you know, we we have stature. We have a certain way about us. But everybody felt that her calm spirit would definitely be one to maybe balance balance yeah. it out <laughs> and help that out. And so when people got a chance to be around her and experience her, they'd be like, 
yo, she is just so kind. She's yeah. just so caring. She's just so loving. And you can actually tell that it's not just, you know, her trying to fake her way in this thing. It's actually her. Yeah. And that's one of the greatest things that I loved about her from, you know, from the first times that I met her is just that that spirit carried over. So most people did. Now, were there people, were there girls out there that might have had an idea? Yeah. Yeah, true. But for the majority of our membership, like 99% of it, they were they embraced her with open arms. Yeah. Um, and, I, and that's all because of who she was. That's interesting, man. <clears throat> that's which, 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 which doesn't, is, which is an unusual thing, as you know, that yeah. would happen in the church. 100%. Yeah. And then you said, so there's a, there are some transitions that had to happen with your attire, right? Like you were, you, look how she looked. How, 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 I was like, okay, now I got to be holy of holies. Can't show nothing. I just because I wanted to be safe. I didn't know. I, I was learning everything, and so I would just look at Pastor Vicky. I would look at my mother in love. Like, how is she dressing, and how is she <laughs> behaving? And she was my example. I didn't have anything else to to go by, and so I might have went to the extreme. You look at our elderly walking around. Yeah, when I look back, I'm like, ooh, that was not. Beautiful. What was you saying, Jonathan? Would you encourage her? To- no, I, I I just love looking at her, no matter where she. I mean. I, she was beautiful, so he was like, "I can visualize what's underneath, underneath all the clothes." <laughs> all the clothes. <laughs> That's not what I was thinking. <laughs> it was under the I, 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 I was, you doors. know, what it was. My mindset was so not on that. My mindset clearly during those ten months of dating was getting to that altar, yeah. yeah, and us building a foundation as much as we could for what. Because you hear people always say, "Don't worry about the day." Because you have a lifetime yeah. to worry about. And most people, when they get engaged, and now as a pastor, they their mindset is, okay, what am I going to wear? Mm-hmm. Who, who's going to be in my bridal party? Where are we going to have it at? What DJ am I going to have? Yep. Uh, what's going to be the song that a girl walks down to the aisle? What's the seating chart, which was mm-hmm. our biggest fuss, by the way? Um, because we only had a wedding. Our wedding reception was 200 people, but we had thousands of people at the wedding, 200 people that we had to fit from both sides. That was hard. And I had a church family to oh, fit God. in there. So we went we went at a little bit on that. Yeah. But my whole thing was, okay, how do we build enough foundation? Her spiritually, us both mentally, um, financially, to be ready to take on marriage, marriage at hand. Yeah, we even um, we would we would go. He we went into the word, and we both individually. I would look up every scripture that was to how to be a wife. Really, and he did his part, and then we'd come together and discuss and talk. That's good. Yeah, that's good. What did? What was the first eye-opening experience that marriage introduced you to? A lot of people, you know, they try to prepare for marriage. You're reading scriptures to prepare for it. You're, you know, did y'all get premarital counseling through yes. your father? No, not, not, not through him. So, yet. so my father is one that, in his in his children, he doesn't want to do the premarital Good. counseling. He doesn't want the other family to feel that there's an yeah. unbiased. Yeah mediator yeah. at hand so we went to an outside all of our all of my siblings we went to an outside so y'all did the work mm-hmm. did the premarital counseling then after the vows you get married what was something that made you go wow marriage introduced something totally different that we were uh, prepared for what would that have been i don't know if there was a specific moment i just remember when when i saw the other side of that kind spirit that i saw here we go again here i we go. was like here we go. who are you who's this when did that come out what? well see i was so what happened was when we got married i not only became her husband yes i also became her boss mm. oh that was oh you started working in the church yes oh yes instantly and mind you i'm i'm in work in financials i'm supposed to be doing financials in the church and i did horribly in math <laughs> All through school, and I'm like, God, really? What are you doing? This doesn't even make sense. Jonathan, he he, he can do use anybody. He can use anybody. Jonathan, y'all do a gift assessment. Y'all trying to find that way. Hey, you know, you got to put people where they need it. That's where the need was. Hey, got to give her the grace, the ability. Not and now you bad because she's doing stuff wrong. Right? Exactly. I said, Who are you? What happened to the you kind know. Jonathan? And, and I so I told her I said, um, and I was I was I was out of pocket. So I'll admit that. But when you are the boss and you carry different roles, mm-hmm. it's like 
I don't I believe that you're putting more weight on what I said. Yes. Because absolutely. you're looking at me through a husband, a husband role. Yeah. Absolutely. But if it was I'm a, holding if it was, you accountable through very true. being your boss. Yeah. And I think sometimes when relationships when you have couples that work together, it's hard because there's those blended lines yeah. that mm-hmm. it's hard for people really to balance uh, to balance that out. So in the beginning we both had to adjust, which was a adjust a huge adjustment period for oh, us. Yeah. That she, I remember like, I was like, why don't you just go home? I told him <laughs> like, to fire like, me. Can I just quit? Oh, I yeah, did you not told wanna, me to fire I was like, you. I'm done. Can I just get another job somewhere else? Why do I have to work here? <laughs> what is happening? You said you want to quit? You want to get fired? No, she wanted me to fire her. Said, just she wasn't going to quit, but she's like, can you just fire me, please? Just fire me. Find I somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> How long? How soon in the in the, the marriage did that start? So as soon as she said I do, you started working there. Probably the next yeah. week. Yes. <laughs> after, no, after, after we had got back from our honeymoon, we, she probably had a week off, and then she started coming to work. Yeah. And then how long was it, were y'all working together before she said you got go and fire me because this ain't working? It wasn't long. No. It wasn't long. It no. Wasn't long. Yeah, we had to figure it out because yeah. it was it was a lot of this. But it was great though because I, I believe <laughs> that it takes challenges in order for yeah. you to see what you got. Yes. And also for you to navigate those journeys to understand what it takes out of you to give, what it takes out of the other person to give, because someday she might not have everything to give and I got to hold up that that end of the bargain. But it was those days that it really took us to communicate to uh, in order for us to make that thing work. Um, and now we've been doing it for 13 years, has some ups and downs. 13 years? Y'all been married for 13 years? 13 years. Yeah. 13 years. You know? yep. And I wouldn't have it any other way. There it is. So yeah. you said year seven was a very rocky year. <laughs> what happened in year seven where y'all, where y'all felt like it's time to walk away? Or at least you said you wanted to walk away. I don't know where Tatiana was. Uh, she point. put too much salt on my french fries. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to poison the man. (laughs) (laughs) You know how it gets to a certain point where you're just going at each other. Yeah. That it doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. It becomes so much bigger. It was things like that. Obviously, I'm joking about the song. Yeah. French fries, but I'm using it as an example to say it was basically anything and everything. We had got to a certain point where (sighs) pride was in the way. Um, Now, we had just had our third kid. Um, this fly is getting on my nerves. Man, this fly yeah, is it's legit. Like a, yeah. It's going was, all was, around was, in circles, yeah. but I'm, I'm focused yeah, in. Yeah, go ahead and focus in. It's probably on my head right now. It, it landed a while ago on your head. That's what we say, getting on your nerves. Um, but yeah, so I think it was a lot of different things that were happening. Um, and you get to a point where you're like, man, did really God tell me this was my wife? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Did are you sure, God? I would that, ask him that. Are you like, sure it's not my sure? wife just for the first seven, and then <laughs> I got somebody we'll different out. for the next seven? <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really me thinking: Is the grass really greener on the other side? Yeah. And as uh, most people say, no, nah, just the other grass. Somebody's fertilizing it. You yeah. start fertilizing yours. There it is. Um, and so. Uh, but I didn't want to do that. I, I didn't want to tend to my grass. I didn't want to tend to this relationship. I didn't want to make things work. I, you start sabotaging, yeah. and, a, and when you get to a point where you start sabotaging what God has blessed you with, that's a that's a hard thing because God can only work with what you give him. There and if is. you ain't giving him your marriage, and if you, you know, I just want to say something. If you don't give him yourself, yeah. there is no way for him to then help you out to, to then bless yeah. that. Yeah. Because you got to work on self. And if I don't work on me, I can't be the husband I'm supposed to be for her. Facts. I think we had a lot of expectations on each other too. Like I was expecting you to perform a certain way. You were expecting me to per- perform a certain way. And we weren't really <laughs> internalizing and taking in what it is. Like, like you said, like doing that self work on ourselves and realizing like, Oh, we actually got some, you know, work to do on ourselves before we start pointing fingers at somebody else. And y'all had how many kids at this time? You're saying we had three. three. We had three. So the third one just comes in. And I want to make a point because mm-hmm. I've told her this. So we've had two girls up front, Lillian and Christina. They're so beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, but we had got to a point that even in my mind, you know how when the baby's delivered. So here's my boy. 
boy, I've been believing for. And I'm a I'm a son that was prophesied over before I was here. Back then, you couldn't tell whether it was a boy or a girl. Yep. My dad told the church, I'm having my son. This is my son. He's going to be born on my birthday. People yeah. laughed at him when he said that he was going to have a son because he had had girls prior. But he's proclaiming, this is my boy. And so he took that as, I'm going to have so much faith, that boy going to be born on my birthday. And sure enough. You're born on his birthday? I'm born on my dad's birthday. This man stood up in front of his church and said that. Right. And then I was born on a a whole lot of faith. And then I was born two hours or three hours before service. So he was with me an hour and a half and then goes and preaches. And said, and, and what did I tell y'all? He Here's said, the receipts. The, 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 like, the, the message was, Gotta you can have church. what you say. Wow. So I'm brought up out of faith. So here I am like, yes, I finally have my boy. Um, I'm happy. I'm excited. And then even when the baby came out, when Andrew came out, it was like an hour and 15 minutes for me to even hold my son. Wow. And, and I Because the baby's on me. They put a you know, uh, they, you know, put, they, put, they put the baby yeah. on a woman. Yeah. And then it was like, oh, we got to clean them off. We got to test them. And I'm like, nobody cares if. And so it was just like yeah. I'm using every single yeah. thing that is happening. It's just like, you know what? He was done. Yeah. I was done. He had checked out for real, for real. I'm like, you know what? As fine as you look. It don't even matter no more. <laughs> yeah. said, as nice matter. as you are on the inside, that's cool too. But I don't want to meet you no more. He I told looked, her flat he out. He looked me dead in the eye, holding our baby like, I don't like you. I don't want to be with you. Not when the baby was born. Not at that not time. Them, but I'm saying yeah. like with one of our children, just like like it was nothing. I don't want to be with you. And I'm like, wow. This How is did you feel bad. hearing that? I was broken. I was like dying inside. So you wasn't at a stage where you felt the same way. It had gotten to that point, yeah, because it's almost like if he going to be like that, then I'm going to be like that. Right. I'm sick of being the stronger one or yep. I'm sick of wanting, feeling like, oh, I need to work, try to work, work on it and you don't even care. Um, so, yeah, so I, it was, it was very hurtful, but something inside once again, like deep down was like, but God gave you a promise. So before... We, I had even gotten saved and, and all that. God had told me that he was my husband. So, and he gave me confirmation with, with visions of, I, I saw vividly us with a child on the pulpit. Mm. Our son. Yes. Before you got saved. Correct. <laughs> on the pulpit. But this is what I used to pray. And this is before salvation. I used to pray for a man that would teach me things. Mm. And now this man comes and teaches me, is teaching me the things of God. God says to me, what better thing can a man teach you than there the things of God? And I was like, oh, my God, I have to marry this man. So that's what I went through in the beginning. So now we're going through this craziness. And I'm like, Lord, what is happening? Because you told me this is my husband. Why are we going through this? And I'm not realizing that God's saying, you know, we're going to in life, we're going to go through tribulations yeah. and all that, you know. But so I'm mad at God. And then he gives me clear instructions. He's like, okay, Titan, you got some work to do. And I'm thinking like. It was toxic though. It was bad. For how long? Oh, gosh. Years. Yeah, yeah so, up and down. From what? Say, so say from year what to what? was Seven it? to 11. Yeah. <laughs> no, for real. <laughs> Maybe 17. Yeah. Maybe 17. 17. 17. Sure. Toxic. 10 was rock the, bottom. Don't ten, like ten, each other. 10 was like. We were not sleeping like, in the same bed. We like, were disrespectful, like, even in front of the children. Like, I was basically jumping out of the car. Like, I didn't even want to be with him. It was... You're talking about driving down the street, like, pull over, get it. In the driveway, like, it would still be moving, and I'd be like, I'm out. Like, just jumping out. Um, just nasty. Were y'all going to counseling at all? No. So, this is the thing. I'd be... I wanted to go, and I'd be like, John, let's go. And he was not willing. Why not, Jonathan? I didn't feel like... There was anything to counsel. <laughs> I had made my decision. Do you see what I had to do with? I had made my decision that I didn't want to do it. So why? So why did you file? Why didn't I file? Yeah. Because it was easier to stay. Because you're talking no. about year seven. You're talking it about was, three years. Right. So when you have kids, yes, it becomes so hard to walk away. Yes. Because you're looking at their faces. Yep. Yeah. And. Anytime that you Ooh. feel like, even when you were a kid, 
when things would just be disappointing in your yep. life, you'd be like, oh, you go to your parents for yep. that covering, that love. Yep. And they were just like looking at our kids. I was just like, I, I just can't walk away right now. And that would be the excuse every so single was time. You, was, you, was there a countdown to when they got 18 and moved out? Uh, mm-hmm. In my head. Because a lot of parents in my do head, that. A lot, a lot of parents do that. Yeah. In, in my head somewhat. In my head somewhat sometimes. Um, but then there are other times where I'm like, yo, I'm about to call this divorce attorney. Yeah. And we're about to just handle this thing. But it really was the God in her that switched everything. How? Tatiana, what you do? <laughs> I was obedient. <laughs> um, so God was like, Tatiana, you just need to get back to the foundation. Your foundation of your marriage is me. And I'm like, but I'm praying. W- w- what's wrong? Yes, you're praying, but you're you're not standing in faith. He's like, wake up early in the morning before anybody wakes up. This is during summer, so the kids don't have to be up. And I don't like to wake up. So now you're telling me, God, to wake up early, and I don't want to. Yeah. So I wake up early. I go outside. I don't know what's going to happen, but I just am obedient. I go out there with the journal. But you said you weren't obedient at first. No, it, was two, it took two days. I pressed news. I was like, I'm not doing it. I'm tired. Third day, I finally go out. And I take a, a notepad, a pen, my phone, because I wanted to play some worship. And so I start with worship, and then I start to feel at peace. And God starts to download to me and talk to me, and I'm writing everything down. And now he's putting me into a place of, like, hope and peace and reassurance and confidence and and reaffirming me of who I am in Christ because he had been, you know, making me feel like I'm worthless of a woman and a wife, and I'm feeling like I'm nothing at this point. Like, this man don't even want to be with me anymore. And so now I'm holding on to these moments with God that are were so precious. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, I was lacking this intimacy with you. I didn't realize how much I needed this in order to stand during these tough moments. And that's the only thing that saved me yeah. during that time at yeah. our marriage. Because in our home, it was like hell. Yeah. I just did not want to be in it. And so every day I got addicted to it because I was like, oh my gosh, if I just am out there, now I'm in peace and now I'm in hope. And, um, and it was, it was, it was a pivotal moment for me because when I would step back into the house, I was able to stand a little more boldly and God affirmed me, said, I gave you a promise and I just need you to stand on it. And in my time, I'm going to turn it around. So then when he started to look at me and say, I don't want to be with you, in my mind, I would be like, it's just a matter of time. Mm. This is just a phase. This is just a moment. This is just a season. And in this moment, on the other side, we're going to be stronger and we're going to be better. And we're going to have a testimony from the test that we've been put through in a message from the mess that we've been in. And so I would still like, love on him and I would put little notes and he wouldn't pay them no mind and I would still make him dinner and he wouldn't eat it and he would leave the house and not tell me he's leaving and you know but I still I wanted at that moment now to be like Christ Mm -hmm. I was like Lord you went to the cross for us you died you buried you I mean you, you you held everything for us I need to be more like you and so now he's showing me how to be more like him and he started to notice that, right? And that yeah. kind of was because he, wow. he didn't. It's almost like he didn't know how to receive that. He was like, "How do I receive this love?" And I'm acting crazy towards this woman now. I didn't know. know <laughs> I didn't know where it was coming from. Listen, my pastor preached a message this past Sunday. Pastor Evan preached a message. He was talking about um, serving your spouse as if you're doing it unto God. Yeah. You know? And he said, yeah, I know you probably stopped fixing uh, fixing your husband's dinner. And, and you're like, I don't know, this man crazy. He treat me like trash. Mm-hmm. I'm yep. not going to do it or yes. whatever. He said, but if you have changed your heart posture and you yes. fix that meal and you go, here, yep. here you go, baby, here it is. And he'll start looking and he'll be like, well... It'll do and then it start changing yep. his heart, yep. and so this is a real life example of that. So, Jonathan, what happened in that moment? So, for me, it started. God started to speak to me and say, "Where did you go wrong in this? Because if you're supposed to love her as I love the church." Mm. 
you shouldn't be. I, I'm not leaving my church. I'm not. I'm not leaving the body of Christ. I'm. I'm. I'm there for it. I'm the covering. I'm the head. And so, seeing her act the grace of God and allow the grace of God to flow through her, it's like, man, God, you got enough grace on me. Yes, for us to get this thing right, when most women probably would have walked out and said, "Deuces." Yep. Now, obviously, there's stuff that was happening in this yeah. way, too, but it wasn't about that because as me as the head. There it is. It was up to me to set the tone mm. and how this thing was supposed to go. Yes. I represented Christ in the beginning and said, hey, you plus me, this is what God can do for me and you, yeah. and this is how he will represent for us. Yeah. And so losing sight of that, because even as a pastor, I can go preach messages. I can do a lot of different things, but... To see the God change in her life where no matter what I said, it was almost like Teflon. Mm. It was coming, it was being blocked right off. Yeah. Dinners was like looking good. But I was like, man, <laughs> let me just eat it because it looks like it was made with so much love. <laughs> let me just eat it. And seeing that really started to create intimate beautiful. moments for us. And I remember I told her, I said, I apologize. Mm. And I said, I'm sorry for the missed moments. That was big for me receiving that. You said the missed moments. Because when you think about when you're acting out of pride and you're holding on to a grudge that really you've kind of made up in a sense. And yes, it could have been, there could have been some reasons why it could have been valid, but God was like, nah, that's not, this is not what I, what, what has been happening is not a result of what I wanted for y'all. And so I said, sorry for the missed moments. I'm sorry for the missed intimate moments. I'm sorry for the missed times that we could have had. I'm sorry for the missed moments of us just looking at each other and growing and maturing instead of we've been tearing down each other. Yeah. I'm just sorry because I'm held responsible as the man of this family. I'm sorry. And so that was a big moment for us where we both looked at each other and said, now everything wasn't like, okay, 100, we never had right, an issue. Right. But that was a turning yeah. point in our relationship that turned us not towards one another, but turned us more towards him. Yes. And that is the difference maker. Ooh. When you turn towards God, man, relationships, that's why the enemy doesn't want them to to, to go further. Why? There because it it's a powerful force yes. when two are walking together as one. Yes. And yeah. so uh, realizing that and then God used that the words that she wrote. Mm, yeah, so two years later, God's like, you, you got a whole message in this journal that I gave you. So that you were writing outside that, that whole time. I had no idea. I was using it as a saving grace. And now he's like, you've, you've got to share. Is this that your book? World. Yes. Yes. That is my what devotional book. I ain't book. got the book right. Where is it? It's right there. Hey, I need, I need, I need the book. I need the book. Uh, <laughs> just slide on here. Walk out on the camera. This, this, this. I remember you you had your table set up yeah. and you this 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 oh girl that was the best commercial ever for this book. Rihanna, can you can you hand me that uh come around the backside and grab that the one is for the, you. The one is for you though. Yeah, so Man. Is that the one for you? Let's no, see. The not. intimate. Is that the one? Is there a message in there? Uh no, no. no that's that's hers, the other one. Yours is the other one. But yeah. Man, yeah, that, that, that no, that little stand where the where the pen is at in front. This man, look. This is and crazy. See, those are the notes right there that I was writing. Wow. Those are the actual, that's some of the actual notes that I wrote. And Great I mean, are you, Lord. Everything in there is from there. <laughs> Man, I love it when, I love it when something has a story to it. You know, I'm a, <laughs> I love this heaven on earth. So God told you to take all that and write this devotional. Yes. Yes. 16, cast all your cares on the Lord. There are evil spirits all around. Depression is real and is a sense of complete loneliness. Yes. It's a sense of heaviness. Thank God that we do not have to conform to these feelings and carry the weight of the world. The Lord tells us to cast all our cares and give all our burdens to him. He cares for us and he loves us so much. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. 
Do not be discouraged. As difficult as it may be, we have to keep ourselves fixated on the things that are good. Be intentional about surrounding yourself with things that are positive and uplifting. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, Mm. whatever is pure, Mm. whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable. If anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. The enemy wants to keep us in a place away from God so that we feel separated, left out, unloved, and not cared for. He wants us to feel stressed, heavy, and burdened. But God, he gives us a way out of no way. He has a solution to every single problem we will ever face. With God, all things are possible. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Forever forever yours, Lord, Tatiana. Let me tell you something. That right there? I, I, I was about to cry, but Jonathan, I kept, I kept, I kept my gangster. I kept my gangster. I was about to I'll break down. For y'all, cause cause, let me tell you something. That whatsoever is true, whatsoever is lovely, yeah. that that right there mm. will put you in a in a in a mind posture and a heart posture mm-hmm. to literally lift up whatever depression you're right. going through. He says, "Think on these, these things. things." Right. So while I was reading that part, that right there hit hard because I used to when I was in my darkest moments. Mm. I will read that scripture and I'll be like, okay, wow. we have control. Uh, we have control on what we become fixated on. So yes. I love the fact that you said uh, be fixated on God, be fixated on the, the outcome that we really want yes. by changing the mindset and our eye set on God. Yes. Mm-hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So listen, oh, listen. Devotions of love, 31 <laughs> days of day and night devotions. Yes. Tatiana Merritt, an intimate exchange of the heart. So you said that when she, you started seeing what she had written, what did that do for you? I didn't even know she wrote it. Really? I didn't even know what she was he doing. He didn't know what I was doing. He didn't care. At that point in time, mm-hmm. I didn't care. So she would just leave at five in the morning. I mean, I would be up and notice that she was yeah. going, but I didn't know where she was really going. I thought that, and then some days I weren't even, I wasn't even in the bed anyway. Yeah. I was sleeping downstairs. So it wasn't like I saw her get up and write this journal. Um, it just so happened to be, I think one day I saw that she had this book and I'm like, what is this that she's writing? But since it was just, like that, I was just like, oh, she's spending time with God. That's how that's how I just yeah. looked at it. But it, it's funny because it got to a point where years later, God is telling her, hey, I want to use what took place yeah. because there's somebody else out there right. that needs those intimate relationships yeah. with him. And I think that's also was the game changer for me because even though I spend so much time studying, we can study but that don't mean that we allowing God to speak. That's right. And the application of the yeah. word that we study. It's 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 always and people are always like, oh, why is this preacher doing this? Why is this person doing this? Or even a Christian, why did why are yeah. you making these decisions? It's like, don't be a hearer, but you gotta be a doer of what you're yeah. hearing. And so uh the more that I was starting to pour God into me, it's like I can't afford to treat the woman that God gave me like that. Remember when she said, oh, he was a difference maker. He was a gentleman. Yes. And she's like, oh, that was it was the God that was in him. I had to start looking at her and not say, because sometimes in couples, you start to it start to be like almost like WWE. Mm-hmm. Like it's, <laughs> it, you, don't, you start instead of there, you be tag teaming, yeah. you start to be versa. Yeah. And if you're not careful enough, you'll start looking at them as the enemy or looking at yeah. them as your opponent instead of looking at them, hey, we still got this together. Yes. We still in this team together. We still we still going to move forward together. Whatever comes our way, we're going to do it together. And I think that was the shifting that God had to do in me that I had to allow him to do. Right. And I think God always wants to make his impartation in our life. But if we don't, if we're not willing for him to do it, then it just won't happen. I want you to transition into a prayer. I want you to speak to the people. I get so many people that DM me. People are going through divorce. People mm-hmm. are h- holding on to their marriage with, a, with a, you know, a thread. Yeah. Literally, like, I got an email, a DM the other day that was like, listen, I don't know. I feel like my marriage is over. My yeah. my husband has checked out. It's, it's, it's a wrap. We've been married five years, been married 15 years, yeah. been married 17 years. I didn't believe it would come to this. Yeah. You guys have an anointing over that thing because y'all are able to 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 talk about what God did through moments where 
you want to give up, you wanted to give up, and then God began to restore hope in y'all. So if you would, that's your camera right mm -hmm. there facing you. Talk to the people out there. Send a prayer. After you pray, Tatiana, I want you to tag team, and I want you to speak to the women. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, you speak to the men. Lord Jesus, I just thank you this day, wherever, whenever you're watching this, for those that are tuning in, that they hear your voice, yes. that their heart be open to receive what God has to say. Yes, God. Lord Jesus, enter into their heart. Don't allow pride to bring about turmoil, stress, and problems. But Lord, I just ask that you just come in there and let them know that you love them yes. and that all that you did for them was so that they can that they won't continue to live a broken life. Yes. That they won't be hurt and allow shame and pride to enter in, but Lord, that they would allow you and that they would look to you in every single area. Yes. Men, know for a fact that God is with you. Yes. And I want you to know that God is about to enter in and you to, to his, you're about to experience his love like never before. Yes. You're about to see a transition and a change like never before. Yes, God. You're about to see things break forth like never before. All you got to do is say, I believe God. Yes. And ladies. <sighs> I want you to know how special you are. Yes. In the eyes of God, you are so special, my God. You were created for a time such as this. Yes. You were created and fashioned with precision. God loves you and he has a purpose yes. for you. Yes, God. Even if you can't you, see it now, okay? Out of your pain, the Lord... He can create a purpose yes. out of your mess. He can create a message out of your tests that you're going through. He can create a testimony. Yes. Okay. The hardships come to affirm you. They come to refine you. They come to mold you and strengthen you. Don't lose hope of God and who he is. He is able and he is willing he will strengthen you yes. in any time of need, but you must keep your eyes on the Lord. Don't keep your eyes on the issues of life, but on God, the one who is able and willing to switch any situation around and allow him into your heart. God deals with the heart. So get out of your heads and into your heart. Allow the Lord to heal you in every area that needs healing. And love yourself because God loves you. God, I thank you for this thank dynamic God. couple. I thank you for them being transparent and vulnerable and sharing what is going to transform the lives and the hearts and marriages mm -hmm. all over the world that are facing adversity. God, I ask for your presence to fill the homes of the people that have given up, people who have decided to throw in the towel, but you know, the, the divorce decree hasn't been granted yet. Yes. God, you're still a miracle worker. Yes. There is nothing too impossible for you. God, you are Alpha and Omega. You're the beginning and the end, so you know when the end is. Yes. And God, I ask right now in the name of Jesus for you to continue to restore hope. Yes. Hope, a glimmer of hope into their lives, God, and that they too will become a testimony of what you were able to do through their lives. Lord, I thank you in advance for the testimonies that's going to come forth yes. uh, from this episode alone, that people are going to say, wow, the merits taught me something that I was able to, to fight another day. Yes. And God, we thank you for that. I don't take anything lightly. And I understand how you strategically allow people to sit on this yellow couch so that we can share hope yes. with the masses. Lord, I thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Tatiana, how can people get this book? Ooh, you can get it on my website, tatianamerit.com. Get your copy of Devotions of Love. It is a game changer. It is a lifesaver. Um, it's a day and night devotional for 31 days. I have a white page for the day, uh, a black page for the evening. Oh, that's dope. Yeah, right? Yeah, that's dope. And I... I love devotional. So, but isn't that so, isn't that just like God though? He literally is. took these moments.
moments and you yeah. sit up here writing this stuff down and God said, you I think no you're idea. just doing that just exactly. to be writing that? Man, I'm going to use this See, to bless the he's so much matches. smarter than we are. So you were, you've been selling, when, when did you release this book? That was in like January. And so what kind of testimonies have you heard from this? Because I know people have been DMing you mm-hmm. or you've been hearing people tell you stuff. Okay, I'm still in awe. Like, I, I'm just, I'm mind blown at what God does because I did it in faith. I'm like, wh- who's going to be blessed by this? I, I don't, I, I'm yeah. just being obedient. Yes. But honestly, I mean, f- from all age ranges too. I mean, t- to grown folk in their 60s and 70s yeah. and 80s, they're just saying what a blessing it has been and and how it has mm. allowed them more intimate moments with God. And that's really what it's all about is having that deep connection with him and allowing him to do what he needs to do when we don't know what to do. I met y'all at the Hillard's uh, house when we did the Shiro's League. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so when I met y'all, I just I instantly connected with yeah. y'all. I was like, oh, I got to have y'all on the podcast. <laughs> yeah, I love y'all. Great. Y'all real. Awesome. Oh, y'all man. not, y'all haven't been so churched. And what mm. I mean by that is that you can get so caught up in the church that you forget that you can just be real. Yeah. Where you have people that'll be afraid. Yeah. Where you have somebody like Jonathan be like, baby, don't, don't, don't talk about how I left you uncovered. Don't yeah. talk about how that, right. come on. Keep me in this great light. I want right. to be this person person Mm -hmm. for the masses jonathan's like listen no this is this is the journey and god's Mm going to use that to save a lot of marriages so i salute you king for being like that and i salute you queen for being transparent enough to allow your mess to become a message yeah uh and watch this book is going to change lives so listen you about to say something Jonathan? no i felt Mm -hmm. like you about to say something (laughs) Thank y'all so much for tuning in to the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Make sure that y'all visit her website. It's going to be a link in the description. Uh, y'all know how we do on Dear Future Wifey. We show so much love to our guests. So go ahead and blow her mind. Let her look up like, oh my God, I sold all these books. I got to do a reprint. I don't know what's going yeah. on. What is going on? And so, uh, and what y'all don't know, we make we make New York Times bestsellers out of our guests. Wow. People, people come in. Oh, they be blowing people's mind. Oh, wow. I had my buddy Tisha uh, Owens. She talks about, she's like, these people still buy my book because wow. like, the episode is still out there yeah. so people awesome. look at it, they still buy a book That's so great. listen thank y'all so much for the love <laughs> that y'all show uh lit fam uh great i greatly appreciate y'all so hey y'all give it up for the mayor y'all Aww. we you. appreciate you thank, thank you, you. Thank appreciate you. it thank you ladarian thrusted suddenly into child protective services in 2015 my nephew black a boy the likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship Slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted? Yep, you guessed it. Slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just too many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? Joining the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, 
Our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse, I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTerris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, let me tell you something. I really enjoy talking to the mayors. They are absolutely phenomenal. I love it when you have um, pastors that just keep it real. I mean, they're they're hilarious. Their story was transparent. Um, I know a lot of y'all probably was like, "What? How are you just gonna know?" He chose her because she was she was beautiful. That's that's the only reason why he chose her. But there was so much more as we begin to let that story unfold. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey, dear future wifey. Love at first sight. Do you believe it? Or would you write it off as lust at first sight? I believe there's a knowing when purpose partners meet. I believe that there will be a confirmation in the spirit when our eyes lock. Our carnal mind may try to persuade one or both of us that we aren't real. But no matter what, our hearts will feel a gravitational pull towards each other. Our hearts will dance. Our souls will rest. We will feel peace in the arms of each other like never before. I do before our I do. Hurry to me. My heart longs for you. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.